and welcome to part 3 of the NOC tutorial. In previous videos, I showed you the various ways to construct a NOC formula to modify the subject and return a product. But the NOC formulas we've made up till now have been very, very simple. They've only been just complex enough to show us how to use the various kinds of NOC formulas, NOCs 0 through 9. Today we're going to do something a little bit more ambitious. We're going to construct a NOC formula that carries out the decrement function. This function takes some number n and returns n minus 1. It might not seem like much, but remember that knock is very simple. It has an increment function, and it has a test for equality, but it doesn't have anything else that directly bears on arithmetic, so it's actually non-trivial to construct a decrement formula in knock. So let's look at how we can do this. In order to show you um, how this program will work, let's look at this snippet of pseudocode. In order to explain it, I need two variables. n will be our initial input, the number to be decremented. So let's say in this case we want to decrement 44. We'll use c as a variable that's our counter. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our counter to 0. Then the main body is going to be a loop. The first step of the loop is going to be to test if c plus 1 equals n, and if so, to return c, because that will be the answer. Otherwise, we'll add 1 to c, and then we'll loop back to the beginning. So if we're decrementing 44, the counter's initial value will be 0. And because 0 plus 1 does not equal 44, 1 will be added to the counter, and the loop will go uh, to the beginning, and it will uh, test uh, for equality again, and this will go on for a few cycles. Uh, and then when the counter is 43, because 43 plus 1 does equal 44, 43 will be the value returned. It might not have been initially obvious that uh, the algorithm would need to look something like this, but, uh, but once you see it, uh, it should be clear how it works. So you might be thinking um, that, uh, that actually we don't have some of this in NOC. For instance, we don't have variables in NOC, and we haven't talked about how to make a loop in NOC. Uh, and that's true. Um, so it turns out though that knock has um, enough within it to be able to carry out these uh, these, these uh, functions. So we have these capabilities. They just uh, they don't look quite like this. I'm going to show you how that works in this video. In order to do that, however, I'm going to have to introduce some new programming concepts uh, that are particular to knock and also to its uh, higher level cousin. So these concepts will be valuable to, uh, to remember and keep in mind as you move on to Hoon. Okay, so once your knock programs get beyond a certain level of complexity, um, you'll want your subject to be structured a certain way. Uh, that way your knock formulas uh, will have uh, certain addresses that it knows to go to um, when, when it's looking for a, a particular piece of information. So to standardize the subject, we use cores. So our subject will be structured as a core. A core is a cell whose head is a battery and whose tail is a payload. The battery is one or more knock formulas called arms, but an arm isn't just any knock formula. An arm is a knock formula that expects to have as the subject the core. Okay, so and uh, for our core that we're going con to construct today, it's a special kind called a gate. Um, we, we're only going to have one arm in our core, and that arm will be the body of our decrement function. So um, our core will only have that one arm in the battery. All right, so um, with that, we can go to the payload. What's the payload of the core? The payload is a cell whose head is the sample and whose tail is context. You can think of the sample as being the argument for a function. So um, since our, our functions will be, um, it'll be, they'll be represented as arms, um, you can think of the sample as being the argument for our arm call. Um, so um, when we wanted to decrement 44, uh, the sample is 44. All right, so, uh, and our context is any other data. 
And this can be as complex as you like. Um, your, your context can have uh, just a few numbers in it. Um, you, anything that's going to be acting as a variable is going to be in the context. Um, any, um, you can have uh, other knock formulas in there. You can have other cores in there. Um, anything, uh, anything you like. It can be uh, fairly complex. So, okay, with that in mind, let's look at the particular kind of core we want to construct in this video. As I mentioned, it's a gate because it's only going to have one arm in the battery. Uh, the sample is going to be the number to be decremented, as I mentioned. And the context is likewise going to be very simple. It's just going to be the value of our counter. So we don't have variables in NOC, but what we do have is the ability to um, uh, standardize our subject so that we know to go to a certain address anytime we want a particular value. So um, our whole context will just be the counter. It will be C. So um, we'll, we'll know exactly where to go now uh, if we want to uh, manipulate that value. All right, so um, let's talk about how to construct the whole knock formula for decrement. Uh, so uh, initially our subject is just in. Notice though that we talked about wanting to structure our subject as a core. So that means we're going to have to add various things to the subject and then put them in the correct order to be a proper core. Okay, so here is our formula and you'll notice that I have a D here. So um, this D is uh, going to be a variable standing for the rest of the knock formula that I'm not showing you yet. The, the formula for decrement is about four lines long and, and that's a bit overwhelming so I'm just going to show it to you piece by piece and hide the various other parts by representing them as variables like this. I'm just going to uh, start off by uh, showing um, what I'm going to do to add one little piece of information to the subject. So one thing I need to add to the subject is um, that address space for our counter. And because our initial counter value is zero, I, that means I'm just going to pin the constant zero to the head of our subject. And I'm going to do that using NOC8. So remember that with NOC8, you run the first subformula against the subject. And because it's a constant, that's, well, the, the return value for that is just going to be zero. And then you, you pin that result to the head of the subject. So that means that the subject will be modified by the time we, uh, that we evaluate D uh, against the subject. So um, the running subject, so you can think of this as being the subject after it has been modified by this first part. So the running subject for uh, this D here is going to be uh, not just in, but in with zero pinned to the head. All right, and I'm gonna be talking about the running subject at various places uh, because uh, remember, we are gonna be modifying this subject over the course of the formula reduction. Um, okay, so to keep track of that, I'm going to use a little bit of notation. Uh, I'm just going to use a subject uh, subscript D when I, when I want to talk about the running subject when we're running uh, you know, uh, D against the subject, remembering that D is going to be something that we expand out uh, and, and there's going to be no, more knock formula there. So here's, here's a D expanded out a little bit more. So we've got, we've got a, a place in our subject for the counter and we've got the number to be decremented, um, but we're also going to need um, an arm. We talked about that arm, the arm being the, the body of the decrement function. So we're just going to represent that knock formula. Remember, arms are knock formulas. We're going to represent that knock formula right now with the variable e. We'll fill out what e is uh, shortly, but for now, just take for granted that e is that whole formula. So um, we're going to pin that to the head of the subject exactly the same th way that uh, we did with the zero. Um, we'll just use uh, NOC8 and then uh, this subformula has the, the constant function uh, and then uh, th that's going to result in pinning E to the head of, the, of that uh, running subject. Okay, so um, and then here I have the, the rest of the NOC formula to be run um, here at F. Okay, so the running subject for F is going to be um, E at the head of a cell and another cell with zero and n at the tail. Okay. So um, we'll we'll skip over e for now. We'll 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 fill out what e is going to be momentarily. But let's think about what f has to do. So now um, the running subject has all three parts that we want. It has the arm, and it has the the counter, and it has the number to be decremented. It has n. It has all those parts in it, and that's good. Um, but we want it to be in the right order. We want it to be 
in, in the, the order that we would expect to make it into a core. So what um, the formula F is going to have to do is it's going to have to construct that core. And then once it does that, we want it to um, call the arm or execute the knock formula um, that's in the battery. All right, so let's look at what F has to be. So um, F is in this case knock nine. And in fact, knock nine is virtually always what you're going to use when you want to construct a core and then run an arm um, in the battery of that core. That's exactly the problem that knock nine is meant to solve. So we've talked about knock nine previously where we've constructed a new subject and then run a knock formula within that subject. Uh, but virtually always the particular subject you're going to create with knock nine will be a core. So um, the only thing wrong with the running subject at F is that it's not quite in the order that we want. It's ha it has all the individual elements we want. It has the arm, it has the counter, and it has the number to be decremented. But remember, we want it to be in the proper order. And the proper order is the, that we want the subject to have an arm, then we want it to have the sample, and then we want it to have the context. So uh, remember that in knock nine, the knock formula at the end here, what, what I have here in red, this is the part that's going to construct the core. So for the head, we want to keep that the same because uh, E, remember, is our arm. Uh, we want to keep that at the head. So, so to start with, we just keep it in the same place uh, with this zero two. Next, we want our sample, we want N. Well, N is at address space seven. It's at the tail of the tail, that's address seven. So that's why we have knock zero pulling out address seven here. And then lastly, we want our context. Our context is at address six, so that's why I use knock zero to pull out the value at address six. And this creates our core. So the running subject, when we call that arm, so this is what we use this, uh, this two here for, it's going to uh, call the knock formula at address two of the core we just created. So it's gonna call the head that we just created. So um, uh, it's gonna call E, that's the arm. So um, the subject created by this, this red knock formula is this running subject here. And that's what's going to be passed to the knock formula at the head at, uh, when we, we pass this whole core to E. So remember that arms must be called with the subject as a core. Otherwise, it either will uh, crash or you'll have undesirable results. Okay, so um, that's it for F. Now we need to go back and say what uh, E looks like, what the knock formula will look like at E. So um, in order to do that, let's talk about the main body of that decrement function just one more time. So the main body has in it um, a conditional. It has the if then. Well, we have a knock formula that allows us to, use, to, to carry out an if-then, uh, that's knock six. So um, we've got the three parts. The first part we have is the, the test, the test condition, and that's either going to be true or false. If true, it will, uh, we will want to run uh, this part, return C. Otherwise, we'll want to add one to C and then loop. So we have the, the, the purple for the test condition, the blue for returning the, the counter, and the green for adding one and then looping. So we don't actually have uh, anything that directly says loop in knock, but what we can do is because the arm is still in the subject when we call the arm, we can, uh, we can call that arm again at the end. Um, and this time uh, when we call the arm um, for the looping purpose, we're just gonna modify the core slightly. We're gonna modify it um, actually just a piece of the core. We'll modify the counter by incrementing it by one and then calling that arm again. And that's how we'll carry out the loop. So to see how that works, let's, uh, let's actually look at what E will be. So E is gonna be knock six. Uh, the first part will be the test condition. The second part will be if the test condition is true. And the third part will be if the test condition is false. So let's look at those three knock subformulas successively. Remembering that for, for each of them, this is what the subject is going to look like. Uh, the running subject at E. So the head will be the, the arm, and then, uh, then we'll have the sample, and then we'll have the context, which is the, the, uh, the counter. All right, so let's look at the test condition. Um, uh, the test condition is if C plus one equals N. So um, the test for equality, we'll use knock five for that. And then uh, to figure out um, 
what, what, what we do here, we want to look at uh, where C is. So we know that C is at address space 7. It's at the tail of the tail of the subject. So we'll take um, whatever is at address 7, we'll increment it by 1. So this is C plus 1 here. Okay, and then we want to see if it's equal to N. So N is at address 6 of the subject. So we'll use NOC0 to pull out the value at 6. And that's it. That's, that's the test condition. C plus 1 equals N. Okay, so if that returns true, we're going to um, reduce the NOC formula at G. Uh, so what G is supposed to do is it's supposed to return the value of the counter. And that's simple. The, the counter is at address 7, so we just return the value at address 7. That's it. Otherwise, if the test condition uh, is false, um, we're going to uh, carry out the NOC formula at H. So what H is going to have to do is it's going to have to create a new core where the counter is incremented by 1, and, uh, and then it will run the arm again, so that the arm will call itself. Okay, so the red here is where we're constructing the new core. We're going to keep the head of the core the same. It's the same arm that we, we, we want at the head. Um, and then we're going to keep the sample the same because uh, obviously if we want to decrement 44, we don't want that changing partway through um, the program. So we're going to keep that the same by, uh, by pulling out address 6 here. And then uh, for address 7, we're going to modify it slightly. So we're going to pull out the value at address 7, and then we're going to increment it by 1, and that will be the new uh, value for C when we call the arm um, at this point. So uh, we'll, we'll call that arm uh, by, uh, by running the knock formula at the head of, of the core. Uh, so that's at address 2, and that's it. That allows us to add 1 to the counter and 2 loop. So at this point, we've covered... Um, all parts of the whole knock formula for decrement. So let's look at the whole thing. Okay, so these are the various parts of, of the knock formula we've talked about in this video. Let's uh, make all the substitutions, get rid of all the variables, and that's what it looks like, four lines of knock. And because that's not particularly readable, uh, let's uh, take out some of the superfluous brackets and indent it a little bit so that it's a little bit more clear. Uh, and just to get a broad overview, um, here's what happens. First, we pin um, 0 to the head of the subject. Remember, the initial subject is the number to be decremented. So let's say we have that in. We're going to pin a, a 0 to the subject so that we have a value for our counter. Then we're going to pin this whole formula here for the main body of our decrement function. This is the arm that we're pinning to the subject. And then once we do that, we're going to construct a core out of all those, all those things in the subject. So we're going to put everything in the right order. Uh, we're going to have the arm, the number to be decremented, and then the counter. And then we're going to, we're going to execute the knock formula that's at the head of that core. So we're going to, we're going to call the arm. Okay, so at that point, um, we do the test for equality if, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, the counter plus one equals the number to be decremented, then return that counter. Otherwise, um, add one to the counter and then uh, call the arm again. And that's it. So um, now that we've done that, uh, let's go back and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this knock formula to the clipboard. And then now let's go to Dojo. And let's run it. So we've talked so much about decrementing 44 that that's the one we'll start with. So. Um, I'm going to, oh, I, I didn't get copied in the clipboard, so let me do it uh, correctly this time. And let me paste the knock formula in now that I've got that initial subject of 44. Give the parser a second to uh, process all that. Close the parentheses, and we get 43. Math checks out for me. Let's uh, decrement, I don't know, 12. And we get 11. So there you have it. That's decrement. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.